Hello everyone and welcome to our Act Like a Man podcast. And today I have a very, very special guest. Somebody who has gone through a lot of crises. Somebody who has gone through traumatic experiences na feeling ko very timely for all of us for listening to this podcast so so that we could learn a thing or two from this guy. And I've invited our senior pastor from our Victory uh, Tacloban Church. Alam nyo naman ano nangyari sa Tacloban years ago. So let's all welcome Kicks Javier. Hello Kicks, thank you. Hi, for hello, this. hello Pastor Dennis. No, thank you for having me on your podcast. Una yes. lahat, I, I, I would like to greet all the listeners of this podcast. Greetings from Tacloban City. Uh, nais ko rin pasalamatan kung nakikinig kayo at isa kayo sa mga tumulong nung panahon ng Yolanda sa amin ay malaking mm-hmm. pasasalamat sa amin. Malaking pasasalamat namin sa inyo na naging part kayo in rebuilding this city. So, Pastor Dennis, thank you for having me here. Uh, of sa course. Nanuno- ano ba ito? Mapapanood ba nila ito? Mapapanood na sa Spotify, na sa YouTube. Okay. Yan. So, so sana maging viral ito. Kami ni, ano, magka, magka, magka mag-anak kami ni Pastor Dennis. Nakadilat oh. po kami. <laughs> Hindi po kami nakapikit. <laughs> Oh, okay. So uh, yun, Pastor Dennis, thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be able to speak here. Oh, alam ko maging viral to sa dami mong fans dyan sa Tacloban. No. <laughs> Yan. Anyway, as what I said earlier, our topic would be on crisis. And I think all of us uh, know that we are in a crisis. We are in a global pandemic at marami po tayong uh, pagdadaanan pa. It's just the beginning of many uncertainties that will happen in life. Which is, by the way, very natural, no? Ang buhay hindi naman natin control. And that's why I've uh, thought of uh, guesting you, Kicks, kasi nga meron kayong pinagdaanan sa Tacloban na alam ko makakatulong sa amin, no? And yes. maybe share to us a little bit of that experience and uh, and then we'll ask some few questions. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Pastor Dennis, no? Um, siguro, well... From what you've heard in the news, siguro, alam nyo talaga kung gaano kagrabe yung pinsalang na idulot ng Typhoon Yolanda or internationally it's known as Typhoon Haiyan. And uh, just to give you a background, uh, I was not in the, I, w- I did not experience the storm itself because I was in Manila, I was in the School of Campus Ministry when it happened. But when it happened, I had to cut short. Hindi ko na tinapos yung School of Campus Ministry ko to get back here and help out no and uh kumbaga before no it, it siguro most of us we haven't had an experience of war P- pero siguro i would liken typhoon yolanda para siyang gera why because everything around you is devastated as in literally flattened i remember a time no pag pagdating ko doon first time i came to tacloban uh, dumaan ako sa tirahan ko i barely recognized the place because the landmarks that nandoon wala doon yung mga puno na supposedly nandoon wala doon na, parang nawala ako i got lost <laughs> kasi nga hindi ko na ma-recognize ganun katindi yung devastation Kumbaga, before, yung view mo natatakpan ng trees. Now you can see to the other end of a certain place. And not just that, um, bodies everywhere. Um, dead bodies on the road, naka, nakalatag sa daan. From the airport to the downtown, bodies were everywhere. And um, walang mabilan, walang gamit yung pera nung time na yun kasi saan ka bibili ng pagkain. And when I came there, nagkaroon na ng mga lootings, everyone for themselves. Uh, you can see people walking around the downtown, walking around town. Na parang, I don't know if you watch my zombie apocalypse movies. There, yung, when you look at people, they're just walking, na parang aimless. And at night, since walang kuryente, may mga ano lang, may mga parang bonfire sa mga sadaan. Para talagang zombie apocalypse, parang warfare talaga. Wow. And the stench, uh, amoy na amoy mo, yung the smell of death. Uh, yeah. Siguro soldiers would know that if they went to war. But in the experience namin dito, it's really the smell of death. Yeah. Kung nakaamoy ka siguro ng amoy ng patay na daga or patay na palaka sa lugar nyo, sa bahay nyo, siguro multiply that by a million. Mm. Kung baga, dumidikit. I, 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 naalala ko, Pastor Dennis, na pag, nung umuwi ako sa Manila after coming to Tacloban, even if I was in Manila, I can still smell it. Wow. <laughs> in my mind. Parang, yung psychologically, sobrang yung lakas. Psychologically, sobrang lakas. Walang gamit yung mask before. Talagang ano ka na lang, parang pepuesto ka na lang kung saan yung simoy ng hangin. Hmm. Iwasan mo lang yung direction ng hangin kasi kung against the hangin ka, amoy mo yung stench. So, and during that time, parang you would ask yourself, 
can we really, kaya pa ba to? Mm. Kaya bang bumangon dito? Yeah. The different thing with COVID-19 and Yolanda was, sa Yolanda, kita mo talaga na, kita mo yung death. And you, 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 you are asking na, how can anyone ano, recover from this? Mm. So, yun yung experience namin in um, Typhoon Yolanda. But thank God, God is faithful na if you go here in Tacloban, kala mo wala lang nangyari. Naka, mm. Nakabangon na kami, nakabawi na kami. Kailan ba nangyari ulit yung uh, Yolanda? November 2013. 2013. Oh, yeah. Yes, wow. that was so, seven years ago. Seven years ago. And yes. uh, Tacloban now is thriving again. Yes. Of course, yes. there's this oh. pandemic. Okay. I don't know oh, yeah. how affected you guys are oh. with the pandemic. Pero kayang bumangon talaga. No? Kayang bumangon. Always, there's always a start in the beginning of a crisis. No? Yes. Kicks, yes. ano yung mga lessons na natutunan mo bilang isang leader uh, when crisis moments happen? Uh, siguro a couple of things. Number one, uh, people first. Uh, mm. I think people are important. Uh, the first thing I did when I landed here, una, I checked on our pastor, si Pastor Eugene, during that time. I checked on him kung okay siya. And uh, of course, after that, I went to the mayor. No? Uh, kasi daladala ko yung... I used to work for the city government before I became a campus missionary. Daladala ko yung kanyang maintenance meds during that time, no? So, uh, nagdala lang akong folding bike kasi alam ko na transportation will be hard. So, nagbaon ako ng folding bike. So, after that, I checked on some churchmates. Yung mga kaya kong tawagan. Yung that time, ang hirap ng signal, ang hirap mag-contact ng tao. I remember I had to climb on top of a roof no just to make a call. So, lahat ng kaya kong mag-contact na churchmates, I would check on them. And uh, and then, when, when nung kinamusta ko na sila, I began to get data from them. Sino yung mga ka-victory group nyo? Sino yung mga umaatin ng church na kilala nyo? Then we began to come up with the list of their names and their address. And then uh, after that, pinuntahan ko isa-isa. Pinuntahan namin isa-isa yung mga churchmates. Just really to check on them. Mm-hmm. Because Pastor Dennis, if with the calamity this big, you need people to to help you. You need people to help you uh, get back up again, to, to do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. And if people are not healthy, Sino yeah. tutulong sa inyo? Kung baga sa gera, kung ang sundalo sugatan, hindi yan makakatulong. Oh. So first, important to check on people mm. to make sure they're okay, to check their condition. Then from there, uh, you can create an army, you can come up, we can gather an army of people who will work together to accomplish yeah. what needs to be accomplished. Yeah. So I think... Yeah. Mm, Hindi, na-appreciate ko lang na yun yung unang pumasok sa'yo. Hindi yung pumasok sa'yo. May red bandana ka, lalagay mo dito. Tapos lalagay mo ng ganyan. Ikaw si Rambo. Oh, diba? Rambo, di ba? Game oh, na to. <laughs> oh, game na. Ako na. Ako, ako na. Oh, di ba? Okay. Ako na ang savior ng Tacloban. Di ba? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Good thing yeah. na parang unang instinct mo was to get other people but check up on their condition first. Yeah. Kasi yung magnitude din, Pastor Dennis, eh. Hmm. The, moment you, the moment I landed in Tacloban, the reason why the first thing I thought was people is because I just imagine if I was here, I wouldn't know how I would respond. Mm. Siguro nasira, nabuang na ako, nasiraan na ako ng ulo siguro. Yeah. Siguro naglute na rin ako. Kasi mm. so much devastation. I've never seen that much devastation my whole oh, life. Grabe. So ang una talagang papasok sa isip mo is, kamusta yung mga tao? Mm. You begin to remember the relationship that you had. Mm. Kamusta sa ganito? O oh, buhay pa ba si... Ito na tanong mo. Hindi na nga kamusta eh. Ang tanong mo sa sarili mo, buhay pa ba si ganito? Yeah. Yan ang tanong mo. Dahil well, the... hindi mo rin alam at the time. Hindi, eh, hindi mo alam kung buhay. Kasi walang walang internet. Walang updates. Walang cellphone. So, dun mo ma-appreciate na buhay ang isang tao. Hmm. Yung buhay pa ba si ganito? Pag oo, buhay pa. Dun mo ma- ma- mapatutuwa ka na, yes, bu- buhay pa. So, ganun ka-importante yung tao. Wala kang ibang isipin. For you, kahit walang pagkain, importante malaman mo buhay yeah. isang tao. Yeah. Walang supply, walang okay lang yun. Brown out. Ang mas importante sa akin, buhay si ganito. Mm. Na-survive niya to. Yeah. Because when you look at the devastation, how could anyone could have survived it physically? Yes. Oh. Diba itong crisis na to is wake-up call for many. I think yes. the relationships that we build are mm. especially family. Grabe, yeah. di ba? Naka-lockdown ka with your family for three yes. months. 24-7. Yes. Magkasama yes. ka pala oh. dito. Masaya, malungkot, may tawanan, may iyakan. Di ba? Yes. Oh. So, kung hindi mo na-build mabuti yung uh, key relationship sa buhay mo, ang hirap ng lockdown sa inyo. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. 
and I think relationship is something that's so critical for our survival and our thriving as a society. Yes, yes. At the end of the day, I think uh, tanggalin mo na lahat. Huwag lang ang relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Yan, mawala na lahat. Ngayong lockdown, walang gimmick sa mall, walang mga... Pero kung may Zoom ka, may, ano, diba? may tawagan, may text, mm. relationships will really get you through. Ang hirap maging isolated kapag mga crisis. Delikado tayo pag isolated tayo. Mm-hmm. What else did you, what are other lessons you've learned? People first and then... Yeah, people first after you've checked on people. No? Siyempre, si, si, like si Pastor Eugene. Pastor Eugene, ano yan eh. We all know, Pastor, for those of you who know Pastor Eugene Ramirez, he's a fighter. He's really a man. Kung baga, tigasin talaga yun si Pastor Eugene. And, tigasaing. Uh, oh, tigasaing, tigalaba. Tiga Pero literally, talagang, we, if you know Pastor Eugene, may mga attack dogs yan. He's a, he's a tough guy. And, uh, uh, but during that time, na, na, naintindihan ko rin na kahit siya mismo, siguro na, may traumatic experience din siya. Eh. So, I, first, yung nga, check on people uh, para malaman mo yung condition and you can, para at least maka come up ka with a group of people who can help you um, do what you have to do during the time. Second is to assess anong meron ka? What are the resources that you have? Uh, what are the uh, anong supplies? Anong transportation meron ka? So, eh, so paano yun? Wala kayo nun. Wipe out ka eh. Yes. Uh, mahirap yung ano? Mahirap yung transportation. So, kaya nga, before I came to Tacloban, una, inisip ko, okay, walang jeep. <laughs> wala, akong, wala akong masasakyan na jeep. Wala rin mga kotse, lumubog yon So, kung meron man, mga army trucks, which is hindi naman kagad-kagad available. So, I brought a uh, ano, folding bike uh, sa aeroplano. Actually, aeroplano sinakyan ko, talagang ano yun, nagpapasalamat ako kay Colonel, Colonel Browner sa kay Pastor Dennis Isleta. Kasi through them, nakasakay ako. Kasi ang hirap din makasakay pabalik ng Tacloban. So, but anyways, yun nga, bicycles, Tapos uh, si Paso Eugene, buhay yung kanyang motor, yung kanyang Mio Sport na motor. So after we, we compiled a list of, uh, of members, pinlano na namin kung kailan pupuntahan. And then during that time, sakto Pastor Dennis na merong paparating na relief goods from Victory. Mm-hmm. Nagkaroon ng relief, ga- relief operations sa Victory, nag sila ng goods and then sinasakay sa C-130. And during that time, I, we had to secure. We had to secure the goods. Because during that time, kung hindi mo secure yung goods, uh, the DSWD would get it and repack it. No? Kasi ganun talaga, ganun talaga yung ano, situation. So, uh, I remember I had to sleep in the runway. Sira rin yung airport. So, tulog ako sa runway waiting for a call na eto na, parating na yung sa victory. So, tas may nakasulat sa mga karton, victory, ganyan. So, oras na dumating yung aeroplano, hinanap ko na sa mga crates yung galing sa victory. And I had to guard the crate. Natulog ako sa airport. There are C-130s, fighter jets, uh, landing every third. So, wala rin tulog. Pero talagang, at that time, adrenaline high ka. Eh. Okay lang walang tulog. Eh. Para naman sa, para sa taong bayan to. No? And, uh, I rem- ito nga, paso na siguro, on a funny note. May, ewan ko, if you know Anderson Cooper of CNN. Yeah, yeah. So, dumaan si Anderson Cooper, bro. Siyempre, ako naman, uy, pagkakataon ko na itong magpa-picture. Pero, eh, hindi ko maiwanan yung ano. Yung hindi crate. ko maiwanan yung crate. So, sayang. So, yung mga ganun ba? Tapos, unang yan, what do you have? So, we have my, my goods from Victory that is coming. The next problem is logistics, trucks. So, yung isang grupo, si La Paso Eugene would find transportation. Ako, I would guard the crate. Tapos, katawagan ko na rin yung mga kontas ko sa government. And, yun, na- nailabas namin yung mga goods, no? And nung nalabas na namin yung mga goods, yun na, tulong-tulong na kami in distributing the goods. What we did was, we allocated the goods, uh, part of it for the city government, kasi nga, even the city hall employees are victims as well. And sila yung tumutulong. So who's helping them? So the church also provided relief for them. Part of it's a church, sa Victory Tacloban, and part of it also to the other Christians in the place. So yun yung ginawa namin. So... Really? Grabe no, parang goods. crisis leadership yan no, sobrang ha, parang how do I do it, is strategy, tapos walang resources. Oh. And I think this is a lesson for many now na may pandemic tayo no. Mm. Yung mga resourceful talaga mabubuhay, no? gagawa ng yes. paraan, maghahanap ko anong pwedeng benta. Yeah, diba? yeah. And they'll really learn how to adapt to the environment they are in. Saka you will be stretched. Um, natutunan ko to, Pastor Dennis, ano eh, when I was a student in Los Baños. 
ang senior pastor nun, si Pastor Gilbert, sila, tas after Pastor Gilbert was Pastor John Dolor. Before, di ba, students kami, but they would really empower us. They would really give us tasks that would really stretch our faith, would stretch our leadership, would stretch our skills. I would remember yung mga linya nila Pastor Gilbert at nila Pastor John. Kunyari, sabihin namin, Pastor, ito na talaga eh. And they would ask us, Bro, yan na ba talaga yung kaya natin? Is there any other way? So college pa lang, piniprepare na kami na merong paraan. Laging merong paraan, laging merong sagot. no? Parang laging merong solusyon. At minsan, pera yung solusyon. Pero pag walang pera, I'm sure... Meron pang solusyon yan. So, I think in college, I was really prepared by our leaders to handle situations in real life na darating yung point na may crisis ka. Kahit sabi natin, wag na, lang, wag na lang yung worldwide crisis. In your own personal crisis, darating yung point eh. Kaya nga, let us not, wag natin iwasan yung mga crisis can actually mature us. Crisis can lead us to heights of our maturity, heights of our faith, heights of our relationship with God. So let us not, ano, wag natin iwasan yan. Actually, kailangan natin yan for us to be the kind of men that God calls us to be. Yeah, that's so right. I think I was, I was prepared for the crisis long before. Yeah. College pa lang ako. By when our leaders allowed us to really be stretched. Yes. No? Oh. Yun. So, ito na yung preparation time ng maraming nakikinig, no? Yes. Your stretching mm. time. Mag yes. Stretch tayo ngayon kasi uh, lahat naman tayo tinamaan. Ibig sabihin, ang mga taong nag-prepare habang tinamaan sila would be most prepared now going out into... Kasi ngayon, medyo mas lenient na sa Metro Manila. Nakakalabas na. Mm. Atlong araw na ako nagtatrabaho sa, oh, sa labas. No? Mm. And it's a more lenient time for us. So, this is really a good time to train yourself to be more godly to learn new skill set no? and uh, to be more resourceful. Yeah. Yes. Anything else, uh, kicks na sobrang nakatulong sa inyo in times of crisis that you think our people need to hear? Um, ito, siguro, what have I learned as a leader? Mm. Siyempre, of course, even though I was prepared beforehand, uh, may natutunan din akong bago. I think one of the, one of the things na na-learn ko is uh, ang, ang tao pala may emotional health din, no? Dati kasi hindi pa uso yun eh. Uh, Pastor Dennis, ako kasi, I'm the type of guy na I would tell myself, lalaki ako eh. Kumbaga, I grew up in a culture na man up. Kumbaga, suck it up. Diba? Ganyan talaga buhay. Life happens. No? And you just have to suck it up. So I remember that time na talagang I, going to Tacloban, I was really on a, ano ko, war mode. Kumbaga, the church there, may trauma, naka, nakaranas ng trauma, medyo hindi pa sila okay. And I realized na ako galing Manila, I'm fresh from Manila, I have to be strong. So all the time, I was trying to stay strong. Talagang trabaho, gising ako maaga, labas ako, punta sa mga churchmates, kausap ng mga tao, uh, check ng goods, make sure na nariripak ng maayos. Um, and then, after a a few weeks yata, two weeks yata, I went to Manila for the graduation. Ayun, kasi buti na lang, inalaw nila ako to graduate from the School of Campus Ministry. No? Kasi sabi sa akin, ala ko, Pastor CJ, sabi sa akin na Pastor CJ, yung ginagawa mo dyan, Kicks, hindi namin kayang ituro sa School of Campus Ministry. So, papagraduatein ka. <laughs> ka na lang namin. So, pinagraduate ako. Then, after graduation, syempre, I had to go back to Tacloban. Pastor Joe Bonifacio uh, went with me. Sabi niya, sama ako sa'yo. So sumama niya sa akin and when I when we came back nagkataon that there was meron tayong member from Victory Alabang who's a psych, psychologist no uh, nagpunta sa Tacloban to serve in Tacloban to do debriefing so kinukulit niya ako kicks kailan ka magpapa debriefing tingin ko kailangan mo rin pero sabi ko in my sa lob lob ko hindi ko naman kailangan yan okay naman ako okay naman ako parang I would I was putting it off but there was one time na sige na nga subukan ko na lang so, subukan ko na rin. So, sinubukan ko. And when kinausap niya ako, nagpakwento lang siya. Anong nararamdaman ko? Iyak ako ng iyak. <laughs> ano ba ito? Ba't ako umiiyak? Ay, kung bira tough ako eh. Lalaki tayo eh. Kailangan natin harapin to. Kung sino, sino bang dapat tumindig? Kailangan, dapat malakas tayo. Kasi kung di tayo malakas, paano na yung mga ibang taong tumitingala sa atin? That was my mindset. And I realized na from yung usap namin sa debriefing, I realized that I was I was suffering from some kind of ano guilt. Now I was guilty 
that I was not there during the storm. I did not experience what the people experience. And that, wa- that is why I was pushing myself too hard. Sabi sa honey, Pastor Joe, I think Kicks now I know why I came here. And that is to minister to you. Sabi sa honey, Pastor Joe, Kicks, the moment we landed here in Tacloban, you did not stop. You did not rest. You went to work immediately. Paggising mo, trabaho, ang aga mong gumising, trabaho. Hindi ka nagpahinga, hindi ka huminto. Kumain ka, ang bilis lang. And it's because of that I was guilty that I was not doing enough because wala ako eh. Wala ako ng storm. So I realized that meron, ang tao pala may emotions din, may soul. You know, I think, uh, di ba, God created us with, uh, well, for the trichotomies, no? Body, soul, and spirit, no? Na meron tayong emotions. And before, it affected how even I ministered to others. Dati sasabihin ko lang, ito sabi ni, ng word ni God. Banat na. Obey ka lang. No, eh, clear naman yung word ni God eh. But during that time, I realized na ako rin pala, may emotional aspect ako. Yes. Na sometimes, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to trust the word of God. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's difficult to obey because may lumalab, may, may soul ka eh. May, may, may lumalaban. Yeah. So I realized that as a leader, it's also important that you are emotionally healthy. Mm. Na kailangan mo rin ng kausap. Yes. Kailangan mo rin aminin na hindi ka okay. Yeah. Kasi sometimes as leaders, we feel na we, we always have to be okay because people look at us. Yes, to a certain extent, na we have to take care of ourselves because we are leaders. Yeah. But at some point, we need people in our lives who we can talk to and be vulnerable with. Yes. Who we can just open ourselves. Na unfiltered. This is how I feel. Yeah. Wag natin iran sa social media. Oh, tama. That's not a place to yeah. process your emotions. Yeah, it just goes to show when you rant it on social media, you have nobody to talk to. That's why you're yes. putting it in social media. If you rant on social media, you don't even... Ako, before I, before I talk to others, at first I talk to God. Yeah. May unang-una sa siguro one thing I learned is in processing your emotions as a leader, first deal it with God. Wow, yeah. True. God is not intimidated by our emotions. You read the book of Psalms, it's filled with lament, Lahat ng klase emotions nasa Psalm. You read the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk was complaining before the Lord. Lamentations na lang eh. Lamentations na lang. Pambihira, di ba? The title <laughs> pala. Lahat iyak yun. Lahat iyak yun. Yeah. So, that's what I did. Yeah. And even until now, it changed me, Pastor. It changed how I minister because now I understand that mm. people have emotions. Yes. Nagina, kumbaga, mas holistic ngayon how, how we can minister. Mas holistic when we consider that a, a, a person has a physical aspect has a, 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 an, an emotional aspect and a, and a spiritual aspect. Yes, minsan kasi tayo mga pastor, minsan, word lang ni God. Basta yan, sundan mo yan. Act like a man lang. Act like a man lang. Pero yung pala, ang hindi, ang, hindi pala nila kailangan word ni God. Ang kailangan nila matulog. Oo, oh, tama. Minsan, minsan nga, may, may kinakounsel ako mga student, ang lung, lungkot na lungkot daw sila, depressed, depressed. Ang una kong tanong, bro, kamusta yung pagtulog mo? Ano nga eh, pastor, Puyat na po, ilang days na akong puyat. Bakit ka puyat? Eh, alam mo na, pastor, eh, nood-nood ng YouTube. Mga, ano. Sabi ko, bro, tingin ko kaya ka malungkot. Kulang ka lang sa tulog. Itulog mo lang yan. Kasi minsan, minsan tulog lang. Minsan, emotional. Kailangan niya ng kausap. Kailangan niya ng mag, mag-understand sa kanya. Pero minsan naman, napaka-extreme. Puro understand, understand. Pero kailangan, mer- pero kailangan din niya ng truth. Doon papasok yung word ni God. Bro, alam ko, Thank you for, ganun tayo. Thank you for opening up to me. But I want to encourage you, here's the truth of the Word of God. Mm. So, as a leader, I learned that aspect na, pambira, emo, may emotions pala ako. Oh. I also need to take care of it. Kasi pag hindi ko pinalagaan to, sasabog ako. Yes. So, yun. Uh, Kicks, this is uploaded at a time where there's a, a pandemic. We had, as a pastor, I had so many emotional conversations already. Even my own emotions has been in a roller coaster for the past few months. Yes. Hindi ko ma-explain. Pero, dito ako thankful. Thankful ako. Meron ako mga lalaking kaibigan tulad nila Larry Oy, nila Francis Kitiongko, na kaya ko nga, you know, just call them up. Yes. Debrief my soul. I need yes. somebody to talk to. And I'm telling you, this is so helpful sa akin that I'm able to do my work, the hard work yes. of having emotional conversation because I can debrief it with somebody else. I have yes. friends. I have a band of brothers 
who's helped me and also my wife sobrang yeah. thankful ako kay Tammy who has helped me understand uh, uh, understanding siya ngayon pag uh, gusto ko matulog ng 8 pm kasi I don't sleep early <laughs> pero ngayon kaya ko matulog ng maaga because of the the things that are going through in crisis moments yung nga sabi mo eh, sleeping is actually very spiritual kasi kailangan ko matulog kasi mabigat to I need the strength that I need to face a new day because His mercies are new every morning. So might as well sleep this at night because I'm going to face new things tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Dennis, I think, ano rin, so I just want to add something to that. Uh, right now, I, I, napansin ko, there are, the, there are many people na parang they're waiting for someone to talk to them. Mm. Uh, but I would, kaya nga di ba, sabi mo, you are thankful that you have people in your life that you can call. The telephone works two ways. Kung hindi ka kinakamusta, yes. ikaw mismo ang tumawag. Merong, ang telepono may incoming sa kamay outgoing. So kung walang incoming, as a leader, don't wait for for people na kamustahin ka. If you need na kailangan mo na talagang kausap, call them. And yes. ako, I appreciate that uh, uh, we were taught in our movement na ano tayo, we value family, we value relationships. So, Kung hindi ka tinatawagan, ikaw tumawag. Kung baga, don't ever think that people are too busy for you. Mm. Your leaders are not busy for you. Sometimes you just need to call them. Yes. No? So that's my advice to, to the men, young um, men today na, yes. No, yes, sinasabi nila that you are millennials. I, 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 for me, refuse to be labeled by the word millennial. True. You're a child of God. You're a, you're a, you're a man that God has created. And hindi porke millennial ka na dapat parati kang depressed, na dapat parati kang malungkot, na dapat uh, dapat lagi kang in-understand. But you know what? We need people in our life that we can call. Sure. And I think uh, as as men, sometimes pride natin eh. Hmm. Misa ma-pride tayo na ayoko, ayoko tumawag. Uh, they have to know na I'm a good leader, I'm a ganyan. Pero hindi. That's why we need people we can trust, that we yeah. can open up to. Kasi kung healthy tayo doon, hmm. Pastor Dennis, if we are una spiritually healthy, emotionally healthy, physically healthy, yung crisis kayang harapin eh. No? Nangyayari kasi pag hindi tayo healthy in those aspects, yung mga maliliit na problema, parang ang laki. Mm. Na-overwhelm tayo. And why, uh, why am I sharing this? At times of crisis, it's important to hear God's word. Yeah. It's even before the crisis. Pastor Dennis, I would always say this to, to the leaders and even to the church members. Magbasa kayo ng Bible araw-araw. Hmm. And there will be times na when you read your Bible, walang walang ano, walang 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 punch. Hmm. Uh, 'Di ba? Walang walang ano, walang walang tindig balahibo. Walang walang sense na Lord you're speaking to me. Walang ganoon. But be faithful, store that in your heart, write it down. And sometimes sa preaching, minsan nakinig ka ng preaching, wala, walang epekto yung preaching sa iyo. Pero itago mo lang 'yon. Why? Because there will come a time when crisis hits your life. The Holy Spirit will remind you of that word, that verse you have read, that during that time, it did not apply to you. But during that moment of crisis, then it made sense. God already already answered your... God already answered long before you had the question. Oh, amen. So, that's my advice for men today. Do not neglect your spiritual life. Yes. Do not neglect reading the Bible. Mm. It, that, that enabled me to hold on to the promises of God during crisis. Kahit nung Yolanda, mm. mayroon kang mga bao na pang bato sa kaaway. Kasi ang kaaway, walang 24-7 yan. Mas, mas, mas faithful pa yan sa, sa atin <laughs> na mag-accuse, na mag-sinungaling. Mm. 24-7, di nagpapahinga. Mm. No? That's why men... In times of crisis, I think hindi lang emotionally healthy ka. Hmm. Kailangan na. Spiritually, bantayan mo yan. True. Very diba? true. Yeah. Okay lang manood ng Netflix. Okay lang manood ng Last Dance. Okay lang yan. Pero make sure na busog din ang spiritual life mo. Yeah. Kasi pag busog ang spiritual life natin, kahit anong pagod physically, solve tayo. Yes. Kasi puno tayo spiritually. True. So I think in times of crisis, I think that's what I've learned and I've grown into yeah. na magbaon lang ng magbaon ng salita ng Diyos. Mm. Kasi darating yung point. Kasi when in times of crisis, the reality can be so overwhelming. Yeah. Like like ngayon, where when is the end? There's no clear end in sight. Mm. Kailan matata- kailan yung vaccine? Mm. Kahit nga sa church, diba, we are deciding to reopen the church. Mm. Eh baka pag reopen natin, biglang nyaks. Baka isara na naman kasi baka tumaas ang infections. Mm. 
But as long as you have the Word of God, the Word of God is our greater reality. Yes. Na, in times of crisis, when, wherein reality can be so overwhelming, mm. the Word of God is a greater reality that we can hold on to. Amen. That we can actually lead. Ang hirap mag-lead kapag overwhelming. Pero pag meron kang pinahawakan ng mas greater reality, it lifts you up. Then you can lead calmly. You can lead with a clear mind. Because every day for you, every day into the crisis, you know that it's just God's way of unfolding His plans. Yes. And many times, His plans is not the way we thought it to be. Mm. Many times, His answers to our prayers is not similar to the way we want our prayers answered. Yeah. So, secure tayo na sa panahon ng crisis, may, may, may Diyos pa rin. Galing. Tinek ko, last time I checked, siya pa rin si Gade. Hindi naman nagbago. Oh. So, <laughs> Yun ang panghawakan natin. Check natin bukas ulit. O, check natin bukas kung God pa rin siya. So, oh. Kanina kasi nag-check ako. Parang siya pa rin eh. Hindi oh. na, nagbago. O. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Kik. Sobrang puno nitong podcast na to. Hindi ko alam paano to i-edit. Mukhang hindi na to masyoshorten pa. No? Uh, the valuable lessons. You've heard from a man who's experienced crisis in the past, 2013, and has risen up from that crisis, the whole city of Tacloban, and you've seen how they thrive and grow. And I think there are so many valuable inputs here that we can take home with us to spur us, to challenge us to face this new crisis that we're facing. So thank you so much, Kicks, for uh, enlightening us today, encouraging us today. Sana meron pa tayong second interview. Uh, in the near future. Yes, why not? Why not? So, marami ka pang pwedeng sabihin. Punong-puno na. post Yolanda. Pwede yun. Yeah. Oh, or post-COVID. <laughs> Post-COVID. <laughs> Pwede. Oh, di ba? So, uh, thank you so much again. And also to everybody, if you are undergoing any crisis, uh, you know that you have a community. If you are part of a church, if you're part of Victory, please connect to your pastor. Uh, sa mga... Uh, listeners ng Act Like a Man, meron din tayong community sa Facebook, Men, Not Boys. You can go there. It's not for, uh, it's it's really a group to spur one another, encourage one another. Walang walang pa cute-cute doon. No? Talagang derechahan lang tulad ni Kix. So, talagang yeah. dumerecho ngayon. Straight to our heart. And I hope it convicted us. And so, yes. we'd like to encourage you to please like, subscribe, share this channel. Also, follow uh, Pastor Kix sa Facebook, Kix Xavier. So, thank you very much, Kix. And yes. uh, hope to see you again. And to everybody out there, continue to act like a man. God bless you. Okay, God bless you all.